Thank you. All right. So good evening, everybody. I am going to start tonight. So tonight is, you should be most everybody's day seven for the program. So uh, I wanted to add a third class in because I do the 10 day and I do two classes and I feel like I have to cram so much in for for everybody to understand and then you feel like it's overwhelming. So I just wanted to break it down a little bit. So I made a little back to school for patients just for you. So I'll talk about the supplements. We'll review those real quickly and review the foods in the program. And then we'll talk about macros and uh, low carb, high fat diet and the benefits of that. So if you're on the blood sugar program, your supplement schedule stays the same. You still do up to three shakes a day. And if you are full, you don't force those three shakes in. Generally, I do two, I do one full shake and I do a shake that I make just to take my supplements with. So I kind of do a shake and a half. Uh, I always keep a shake kind of handy. If I get hungry, I can just take a few sips and I'm good. Um, the SP cleanse, still the same, five capsules, three times a day. The Diaplex, five capsules, three times a day. And the Gymnema is two in the morning one in the afternoon and one at dinner. Inflammation program, once again, it stays the same. Your shakes, you can do up to you know three shakes a day. And if you feel like one is good, I, I'm okay with that. You do get your protein, because I do have everybody on the, uh, the Veggie Pro. So the Veggie Pro does allow you to have some extra protein. So if you're not eating the protein, I wanna make sure you're getting enough protein in and we'll talk about why that's important. So you'll do the five SP, uh, five SP cleanse, three times a day, Boswellia complex, one tablet, three times a day, the Cyruta plus three tablets, three times a day. And the black, black curd seed oil is two pearls, three times a day. And then next week I'll talk, I'm sorry, on Thursday, I'll do the final class. We'll talk about, you know, what to do, what to do to move on from there and talk about a couple of things. And then if we have any questions we need to cover, I'll put those in. But I appreciate your time being here. We will record, we are recording this and this will help us to um, give the information out. So your 10 day food program list is still the same. You know, vegetable serving should be uh, target 13 to 15 servings per day. And by God, if you're still hungry after that, then you, you, there's something wrong. Anyway, starchy vegetables, you wanna limit those because of the sugar content in them. And as you can see, the 10 day program for both the food, the blood sugar and the inflammation are, are similar because sugar and uh, carbohydrate, high carbohydrates are what really cause the inflammation in our body. So page 16, your fruit. So limit your fruit. And I would stay with more berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries are all fine. Uh, if you're going to have a, have any fruit, I would limit it to your shake because it's, you know, it's just too easy to set a bowl of fruit out or set grapes out and you grab those grapes, next thing you know, the, the whole bowl, bowl is gone. Uh, protein serving size is three ounces, two to three servings per day. And any kind of uh, your oils and things like that, two teaspoons, two to three, four, two to three times, sorry, three to four times a day. And then your drinks, uh, filtered water, mineral spring water, green tea. And I'm letting you have coffee as long as you're using either making a bulletproof coffee or using an organic whipping cream. I do, this is our, my new find here. It's Perrier with a pineapple. There's no sugar in it, but it's delightful. It's my new go-to. All right, so remember your vegetables, your five to seven serving size is a half a cup. Um, fresh uh, homemade vegetable juices are okay. I would kind of stay away from a, uh, like a carrot juice because carrot's gonna be a higher in sugar. Um, your, uh, your vegetables can be either raw or you, know, you can, um, I, we like to roast ours. We do a little olive oil on them, a little garlic powder, and then toss them in the oven at about 450 makes them nice and crunchy. Uh, same thing, I love Brussels sprouts that way and then throw a little balsamic uh, vinegar on it and you're good to go. Uh, no white potatoes or corn, so we don't want that high starchy foods because we're trying to limit the sugar. And remember your fruits, you know, really leave them for your shake if you're if you're blending a shake or just use it, I'd stay with the berries, especially if you're on uh, a weight management. If you need to lose a few pounds, I would stay away from the fruit because it's a little bit higher in the carbohydrates. And if you're gonna have fruit, stay more berries. Lean meats, fish, and your vegan protein. So any plant-based, which your uh, Veggie Pro Shake is a plant-based protein shake. Uh, you can do any kind of animal-based protein on the, the, we don't limit that like we do on the 21 day. So your fish, um, broiled, baked, roasted, bro, uh, bro, uh, poached, they're all acceptable. And uh, eggs are acceptable. Just make sure they're free range. Remember cage-free is just locked up in the, in a, a big room and all running around. 
So we want cage uh, free range where they're out running around in Dr. Sunshine. Um, avoid your soda, diet sodas, fruit, drink, fruit juices, your energy drinks, alcohol, coffee. I'm letting you have coffee. Your, you can have herbal teas also, um, but watch any of the other caffeinated drinks. You know, so you're not, shouldn't be doing a diet soda. Uh, no, and then opt for it and your cans will say on there, uh, BPA-free packing, bisphenol A is an endocrine disruptor. So we wanna make sure that's out of your diet. And, and I would look in your cabinets now. And if there are, if you have cans with that in there, it's hard for me to tell you to donate them to the food bank, but it's a better option than you eating them. So, you know, at least they're not being wasted. And then if you have a food that you're allergic to, don't think you can magically eat it on the program. So be aware of that. And your fats, we've got so many good fats we can choose from your, your grass-fed butters, your flaxseed oils, your coconut oils, any, anything that's expeller pressed uh, and organic is what I want you to use. Anything that's hydrogenated, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated like coconut oils, we don't wanna invite that into our diets. We're trying to get, that rid, of, get rid of that out of our diets. So this is what your plate still should look like. You know, majority of vegetables, uh, some proteins, and a little bit of, uh, you have some little bit of carbohydrates in, and that'll include your fats as well. All right, so everybody should be on target with that. If you're having questions, make sure you uh, chat and it should be up in your little sidebar there where the chat is um, and chat with Tina. She'll, she's fielding all the questions. And if you have questions or concerns, please let her know at the end, I'll stop the video and then we can talk about questions. All right, so you hear me all the time in the office say, you know, you're, you know, watch your macros, you know, macro this, macro that. You hear it on TV, you hear the Google say it, you know, you see it on Facebook, but what are macros? So macros, the word macros is shortened from the word macronutrients. Macro meaning big nutrients. We have micronutrients, which would be like your minerals. Those are mean micronutrients. So we only need small amounts of them, but macronutrients would be uh, a, a bigger nutrient. And when we talk about macronutrients, we're talking about three components and that's a carbohydrate, a fat and a protein. I know it's just blown your mind that that's what macronutrient is. It's just a fancy term. You know, we, we, we get these $10 words for, you know, $1, you know, $1 words, but that's kind of the new lingo you hear. And when we, we talk about setting up your macros, we're setting up how many, mac, how many carbohydrates you need to eat, how many fats, how many proteins. And I wanted to talk about that tonight because when we talk on our finale, we're going to be having a new normal. So I want to give you some food for thought, no pun intended. So when we talk about carbohydrates, we have two types. We have a complex and we have simple. One gram of carbohydrate equals four calories. And you can see how big, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but you can see this chemical compound over here. And this is what a carbohydrate is made up of. It's a bunch, it's a big bulky bunch of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. And when we eat those hydrogens, carbogen, car, carbons, and um, oxygens, the body can't, if you're not going to utilize that right away for fuel, the body then is going to break it down into nice, neat little packages called fat and store it. And we know where that fat gets stored. Uh, you can put your hands on your hips or on your thighs or in, underneath your arms. We know where that's been stored. So carbohydrates are energy food. It's starch and sugars. They're the, probably the cheapest form of food that we have. They're very plentiful and available. They're easily digested and they're widely distributed in plant foods as well as in the grocery store on the, the aisles in between. So when we talk about macronutrients, this slide is not in the right place, it should have been first, but you can see the, the difference of the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So we have all the uh, carbohydrates would be your grains, your fruits, your vegetables, and your beans, but the beans have a little bit like your legumes, uh, lentils, black beans have a little bit of protein and overlap as well as the proteins overlap with the fats. Sorry, that is in the wrong place. I will fix that. So complex carbohydrates are nutrient rich and fiber dense. And I was talking just a few minutes ago with Darlene. She was asking about why they're not as hungry after they've been on this for about a week. It's because you're eating foods that are nutrition rich and fiber dense. Your body's full and your body's getting all the nutrition it needs. I'll say it again, when we get hungry and we put poor, make a poor choice of food, a high carbohydrate or a high refined carbohydrate uh, food or like a flour, bread, I mean, uh, well, pasta a little bit, but 
um, your donuts and things like that, your body's asking you, hey, I'm hungry, feed me. You feed it the garbage and the body's like, hey, you know what? I'm still hungry because you didn't really feed me. And then you think, oh, I should have another one of those, another donut, because I'm still hungry. But your body's asking for these nutrition-rich nutrition, nutrition rich and fiber-dense foods, and it's not going to stop wanting them until you give them to them. So they can't get all that nutrients out of the, the bad foods, those refined flours and sugar foods. So we have simple carbohydrates, and that will be your uh, refined carbohydrates. And there's no doubt, I know all of you know what those are. So they're refined sugar, flour, you know, your candies, your baked goods, your sodas, ice creams, all those things are full of refined flour and sugar. Now you can make some of these foods and you can make them more healthy, but they're still going to have carbohydrates in them, but it would be a better choice. So and the more refined they are, the more simple they are, the quicker they burn up and the more hungry you're going to be. Most of my patients start their day with one of those big muffins and they'll have yogurt and fruit and a glass of juice, and they think they're having a healthy breakfast because they had a bran muffin. But literally, it's all carbohydrates, so they have started their day with sugar, which then kind of keeps doubling over as the day goes. We just want more and more of it. Remember, it's very addictive. So your brain only needs 20 grams of carbohydrates per day to function normally. 20 grams. The average American eats 295 grams of carbohydrates per day. That's almost 1,200 calories just in junk food. And that's, that's just, that's, that's, you know, if I'm not eating that and some other people aren't eating that, somebody's eating much more than that. So when we eat carbohydrates, it, it does affect our brain. Um, we have uh, the food intake and then the brain gives the information to the liver to reduce, release uh, glucose for production. Uh, the, you know, that it hits the prefrontal cortex and has a, a insulin response. We have that sense of the muscle. The brain then also tells us to make fat or break fat down, to make glucose or break it down. So it's it does, but it doesn't need that much energy to do that. And that's important for you to know because everybody says, well, I get um, I get like real hypoglycemic. You know, I, I feel like I'm going to faint or I'm I'm so hungry and you know, I can't wait. Well, as I explain this, you'll kind of understand why eating too many carbohydrates is not the best thing for us. So we're going to switch you down the road here. So uh, just believe me, hear me now, believe me later. So we have fats as the next macronutrient, and we have three types that saturated, unsaturated, and trans fats. One gram of fat equals nine calories. I always kind of round it up to 10 just for easy calculation. So you can see that you get a lot of energy packed into one gram of fat. And you know, it, it's an energy food also. It supports your cell growth. It protects your organs. It keeps us warm in this Florida winters we have. It helps absorb nutrients, and it also produces a very important hormones. So you can see the kind of different uh, fats over here, and these are the, the chemical bonds that the fats are made of. The one at the very bottom, the trans fat, and that's the one I mean, you've heard me talk about before you've, if you've been in any of the other classes. This is a um, chemically structured fat, and it was found in margarine. It's a, a cheap form of fat because it lasts long on the shelf. It's like taking your right arm off and putting it where your right leg is and taking your right leg and putting it where your right arm is. So it doesn't anything resemble fat, and the body doesn't really know what to do with it. And it takes a lot of heat to even melt it. And our body temperature gets up to 98.6, a little bit more if you have a fever. So with these, these trans fats have a very high boiling point. So when we eat them, they stay in our bodies a very, very long time. And when you see the fat like on your thighs, um, talking to the ladies, uh, when we get that dimpling in there, that's kind of that trans fat kind of gets trapped in there. You can get it out, but it's talking about doing exercise and, and doing some dietary changes consistently. You can't just do something for a week or 10 days and expect it to be a miracle. Remember, I always tell you I'm good, but not God. Same thing with a 10 day program. It's good, but it doesn't, you know, it's not protecting the universe. It gives you a start. It puts you back on the right pathway. So examples of saturated fat, they usually um, solid at room temperature. Uh, animal foods contain more saturated fat, fatty acids than unsaturated. You know, meat, poultry, egg yolks, whole milk, cold cheese, real ice cream, butter, real chocolate, uh, coconut, palm oil. When we look at unsaturated fats, you know, this is more what we typically see. Um, that we like to incorporate our olive oils, our, our um, deep, our cold water fish, salmon, our um, tunas, swordfish, our nuts, avocados, cheeses. I, I love all those things. 
and then trans fat examples. I know you know this, but I have to show you the pictures. And you can see how, I mean, I think for me, whenever I, when I started on this journey, you know, probably 16, 17, 18 years ago, learning and, and teaching myself and then teaching patients, you know, at first I was like, oh, I'm going to miss that. I really want one of those. But over the years, I'm like, oh, I really want this or I'll have, and I'll have one and I have it. And it's like, yeah, I don't have to do that again. It, it wasn't that all that good because as you um, teach your palate to recognize foods that are whole food and nutrition rich and fiber dense, that's what your body will want. Your body wants these foods here because you're, they're full of sugar and fat and uh, flour that your body gets addicted to. So our next, our third macronutrient is a protein. We have two types. We have a plant-based and an animal, animal-based protein. One gram of protein equals four calories. And then it's amino acid structure. There's actually four structures, but I'm not expecting you to be biochemists. So I'm simplifying it to the one amino acid structure. And uh, proteins are really important because they build and repair your tissues. You, they make enzymes and hormones. They also are the building blocks of your bones. And they're also uh, builds muscle, cartilage, skin, and your blood. And it's a component on, in a, almost every cell. So protein examples, I mean, that, I, that could be on my kitchen table. I would love that. And this is, this is the kind of foods we eat. So you also hear me talk about um, being vegan, and I'm not being uh, been, been against being vegan. For me, I in our household we're kind of I'm, I'm a ketotarian, and we're going to talk about keto tonight. So what that means is I probably get maybe s anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of my diet is plant based, and then the other place is animal based. If I may have a day where I'm all vegan, you know, I may have just a whole um, plant based day. But the important thing you need to know here, the only way we have essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids, these are the building blocks for proteins. And the essential amino acids means our, they're essential to our body, but we do not make them. The only way we can get them is from animal tissue. We have non-essential amino acids that are very available in, in foods and our, our own body can make them and synthesize them. But the essential amino acids, there's nine of them, only can come from animal um, tissue. I know that sounds kind of gross, but it has to come plant-based, uh, animal-based. So on the days that I do kind of a vegan diet, I use, um, Standard Process has a, a product called Protofood, which is those nine essential amino acids, so then I can have my complete protein needs met for the day. Now, if you're, I mean, I, I'm training at a different level, so that sometimes, you know, that, that skews, you know, how I eat differently than somebody that is not training like that. So your common sources of protein, you know, your chickens, your beef, turkeys, beef, and fish, about three ounces, size of a deck of cards is about 21 grams, 21 to 25 grams of protein. One egg is about six grams of protein. The only protein you get in an egg is from the egg white. So that would be a large egg. So about four to six grams of protein in an egg, and it comes from the egg white. The, the egg yolk has all the good fat and the good cholesterol. Um, cheese, we have, you know, low fat cottage cheese, uh, you know, one ounce is, you know, the, your index finger. I do incorporate cheese in the diet, but over this period, over time, you know, it, cheese is just an easy go-to, you know, you grab a cheese stick or grab a piece of cheese or this, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't fare well in the body fat world. I, I have, I've proven that. So we kind of limit our cheese. We limit it to white cheese because uh, these are all things you hear me say all the time. It's because I mean it. What color is milk? Milk is white. So your cheese should be white and you can get a white cheddar uh, the cheese is orange because they add a dye to it. We don't have orange milk. Uh, tofu is another one, but uh, tofu comes from soybean. So I'm a little leery with soybean because of the, the most, it was, the, it, other than wheat, it's one of the most common things that are genetically modified, that and corn. So I'm a little leery about that. Plus it's also a, it acts like, uh, it has estrogenic effects. So it acts like the estrogen hormone. So we want to be careful with that, especially uh, on my patients that are having, um, have had a history of breast cancer or uh, any kind of ovarian cancer, anything like that. We definitely want to kind of watch, watch those soy-based products. You can get them that are non-GMO and I'm fine with that, but just don't, don't overdo it. Uh, low fat milk. Now I, I, the, these are sources, but I would rather have you do a nut milk um, you, and not a soy milk. Um, you can do yogurt. We can get a good Greek yogurt. Those are all good sources of protein. Uh, your beans, uh, peas, and lentils are also good sources of proteins. And your, your nut butters, uh, nuts and seeds also. So 
we'll talk about what your needs are going to be here. So what should your macros look like? So I did this for you. So recommended macros for a day, your carbohydrates should be less than 100 grams. Your protein, you want to calculate your protein at half your desired body weight in grams. So that would, uh, my example down below, um, I weigh 130 pounds, so half of that is 65. So 65 grams would be my protein for the day. My fat would be my desired body weight in grams of fat. So if you're at, say, 180 and you need to be 150, you would use that 150 number because we don't want to support the 180. We want to get you to the 150. So here's my example. Uh, my desired weight, I'm at my desired weight of 130. So I eat between 50 and 75 carbs a day, which equals two to 300 calories. And I don't ever do the same thing. I kind of vary it. And yeah, I, I do the Basudan confusion principle. So I don't do the same thing all the time because that allows my body to be, oh, what's that? Oh, I have to prepare for that. And it stresses the body. And that little bit of stress is good for the body. My protein is between 55 and 65 grams. And like I said, I do a little bit of plant-based and a little bit of animal protein. And that's where I call myself the ketotarian. And I do, that's about 220 to 260 calories. And then I do 130 grams of fat a day. So that's a, almost 1200 calories just in fat. So my total calories in the day can be between about 16 to 17 and a half um, you know, 1700 calories for the day, which is more than enough to support my body weight and my activity. And if I need more, my body will pull the nutrients from my own body if I'm not eating enough. So energy balance. So that's where we talk about the number of calories taken into body versus the, as food versus the number of calories expended. So as I was talking about, if I have a really um, busy workout day where I do a lot of riding in one particular day, I may eat more um, higher end of that 1700 calories than on the lower end. But if I have a day where I, I maybe just go to the gym and I don't really do any other exercise, I'll stay at the lower end just because I know that I don't need that many calories. So remember, neutral, calories in equals calories out. Positive means if you consume more calories than expended, and a negative means if you're trying to lose weight, you want to uh, more calories are expended than consumed. So you exercise more, eat less. So the energy equation. So we have a law of thermodynamics, and you know it's applied to everything that lives. The number of calories we absorb from food has the equal number of calories our body either stores or expends. So either we exercise them and burn them off or we store them in those neat, nice, neat little packages we call fat. So we also have a thermographic, uh, thermogenic or thermodynamic, thermogenic is the t proper term for it, effect uh, that we, we create heat when we, when we eat food, which is great. But you can see how foods aren't created equal. So an apple has 193 grams. Uh, uh, the size of it, but you can see all the carbohydrates in, in that 100 calories of an apple. And then grilled salmon, it's a smaller piece. It's got a lot of protein in it, which is the pink and the yellow uh, half fat. So there's a good protein and a good fat. The white bread has, you know, uh, it has a little bit of protein and it has a little bit of fat, both not good because we would be a trans fat there and a refined flour for the carbohydrate. And the protein it would be negligible. And then the rest is the, that carbohydrate from the, the refined white flour. When we look at that big picture wise, we can see that we actually have calories lost as heat, but we can see that when we eat the fish, we actually burn more calories from eating that food than we do the other two. So, you know, that's kind of a, a metabolic thing, a, me, a metabolism thing. So we have um, our metabolic needs. And if you've done any kind of, um, any of my classes, or if you come over to Eustace and get on my fancy scale, it'll calculate your metabolic rate, which you, what the calories you need to have for the day. So that would be another conversation, but it kind of gives you an idea of if you're, if you're a, let's say you're a female, um, knowing the genre here, we'll say between 50 and 60. So we want about, you know, 1200 calories a day to kind of manage up to, you know, 1500 calories a day, depending on activity. Um, and if, if we're eating too much, then we're going to be putting on weight. So our glycemic index, you'll hear me say that also, like I'll say that blueberries are a better choice for a fruit because it's lower in the glycemic index. That means it has lower sugar. So this kind of shows you what a low glycemic meal looks like. 
a medium glycemic meal and a high glycemic meal. And the high glycemic meal down here at the bottom is mostly what my patients are coming in and eating. They're trying to do the right thing. They're using an uh, oatmeal, they're using a artificial sweetener, and then they're using uh, a milk, which is going to have carbohydrates in it. The medium size is they'll, they'll be using a milk with a 2%, uh, and, but they'll use steel cut oats, which is a little less um, a little harder for the body to digest. So it's a better option than the, the, the instant oatmeal because it's already digested for you basically. But your best choice would be the glow, lower glycemic meal, which would have the spinach and the tomato, the eggs, maybe a few apple slices or maybe a few grapefruit. So you're having a little less sugar, but you're going to be um, able to consume more calories for the day in that. So here's a food pyramid guide. This is what we've been taught all these years. You know, the most of the things we're supposed to have are here at the bottom. A few veggies, a few fruits, a little bit of cheese, a, a little bit of um, protein, and and maybe some butter, and I don't know, that's a well, some sweets, and you know, a soda. So that that was the original kind of food pyramid. You know, eat healthy, live well. How do you do that with this? Now it is Halloween, so this is the Halloween food pyramid. Just you know, FYI, we have the sweets, the candy, and the sugar part there. Just kidding. So we have the uh, over the years, the United States Department of Agriculture um, and the Center for Nutrition Policy and Promotions. Um, the last time it was updated was 2016. Key number there, and you know, you can kind of understand that now, but you can see from 1943 and you see how the food has just really been changed even in, you know, in, in 2011, starting to get the idea because they show the, uh, still a lot of grains, a lot of dairy, um, a lot of fruit, still a lot of sugar in that. So my food pyramid that I like to use is this one in the middle. Stop buying junk food. If you're fat, try to eat less and exercise. I mean, it's very simple. But truly, this is this is kind of the, the food pyramid we want to really kind of put into our life and continue as we get off the 10 day, you know, more veggies, um, you know, moderate meat and fish, a little less fruit, watch your nuts and oils and your spices. And if you can't make a good meal out of that, and I'm not saying you can't have those foods that you've craved or you think they're, you can't live without, I'm not saying you can't have them, but, you know, have them as a treat and not have them as your main course. So when we talk about diet, it, you know, there's no one size fits all nutrition program. You know, we have to choose a diet that optimizes our needs. We have to make sure we have quality food. And that's the most important thing. We want to reduce and remove any of those refined flours and sugars and uh, anything that's over processed or low nutrient foods. We know right now they're not going to do us any, you know, it, it, they're not helping us. They're not, they're not contributing to our wellness and proper hydration is key for healthy living and for just overall health. And I always get, I find my cartoons and it just cracks me up. Uh, you know, this, these are kids that are coming to the door these days. Not that they'll come this year. I mean, they, everybody's tired of being in a mask. We've been in a mask all year and now it's Halloween and nobody wants to be in a mask. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's maybe small on your screens. Uh, do you have vegan chocolate? Um, I'm organic only. I, I have a nougat, uh, nougat allergy. I, do you have any gender, gender neutral candy? Uh, the things we do. So exercise is also key. You know, you hear me talk about it all the time. A regular habit of exercise is super necessary. So invest in some instruction with a professional who can teach you how to exercise your muscles and protect you from injury. Um, certain exercise may be good, very good for some people and not others. You know, some may not be harmful for you. Some may be harmful for you. It all depends on your body. I can help you with that. My background's in exercise physiology. Um, an exercise professional it, it, at the gym, there's always, you know, somebody that can give you guidance and it makes you accountable, which is another very important part. We like accountability. So exercise is technically a miracle drug. Forget Regeneron, forget all that stuff. Take it often. You'll live a longer, healthier life. You'll lower your medical costs. You'll sleep better. You'll have productive work days, enhanced mood. You'll decrease risk of almost any chronic disease. It works for everyone. There are few or no side effects. Every dose is 100% effective, even small ones, and it's the most powerful, readily available drug, and it's free. I mean, you don't have to have any equipment. You can go out and walk. You can do a push-up. You can do a sit-up. All free. So that brings me to a ketogenic diet. I talk about this a lot and you hear a lot about it, but I wanted to break it down a little bit because this is what I really want you to kind of move toward 
after the 10 day, because I'm kind of grooming you for that right now on the 10 day, you were cutting out of the breads. And I'm not saying you can't have these foods, but if you could pick a couple days to start eating this way and then incorporate it. So I kind of adopted this probably the past two and a half, almost three years now. And I love it. I rarely get hungry. And when I do get hungry, I always say I don't have an appetite, which means I have time to select what I want and I can make it. When you're sugar hungry, you have to eat now. I mean, you're standing at the microwave with food in there cooking and you're for 30 seconds and you're saying, hurry. That's not what we want. The ketogenic diet is a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. So you can have butter, real butter. So it's a very similar, has a very similar bio, biological outcome as a calorie restriction. So, you know, if somebody goes on a 600 calorie diet, yeah, you're going to lose weight, but you're not going to be able to maintain a 600 calorie diet forever. Also intermittent fasting. That's another thing that I do. Won't, I won't take time to talk about that tonight because that's kind of another ball game and I'll throw that in next week. I mean, on Thursday. So, I mean, th that has to look delicious to you. Tonight, we're having shakshuka, which is a beautiful spinach with some tomato, and it's cooked together with a little cumin or cumin, uh, salt, pepper, and garlic, and then we throw some mushrooms in there, and then you saute that all up, and then you make little nests and drop an egg in it, put the lid on it, and kind of cook the egg, poach it. Wonderful. So you get all your veggies, you get your good butter in there, you get your good fat from the eggs, and you get a little protein from the egg white. So why the ketogenic diet? Well, scientists say that um, metformin, which is what they give patients who are diabetic, that it interferes with a normal aging process called glycation. Well, guess what? So does a ketogenic diet. So glucose combines with proteins and other important molecules and they gum up the normal workings of, a, of our bodies. And the metformin finding is particularly striking because people who have diabetes, even if it's well controlled, typically have somewhat shorter lifespans than their healthy counterparts. But ketosis uh, will also help to lower blood sugar. So they did a research study in uh, Wales and they had uh, type two diabetics who took drug metformin, lived on average 15% long, longer than a group of healthy people who did not suffer from metabolic disorder, but were similar in nearly all other res respects, meaning they, their diet was poor. So the metformin does have some merit to it, but there's a lot of side effects to it also. So what is a ketogenic diet? So ketogenic means, or keto for short, is a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, and it has a lot of health benefits. The original um, source of the ketogenic diet was developed for uh, epileptic children. So they didn't have to take medication and, they, and it works super well. So studies show that this type of diet can help you lose weight and improve your health. Your ketogenic diet has benefits against diabetes, cancer, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, and many more, Parkinson's, the list goes on. So when you drastically reduce your carbohydrate intake and replace it with fat, that makes you, so I, I, I explain it as we're fat burners or sugar burners. If you're a sugar burner and you eat your carbohydrates and you're doing your activity in the day and you run out of those carbohydrates, your body can't switch over to using fat. You can't drive your car, run out of gas and go put diesel fuel in it and expect it to run. Same thing. So when we run out of sugar, or we run out of uh, carbohydrates in our body, and we can't go to that fat, the next available source of food is your muscle. So then we muscle waste. So then we lose muscle and we keep our fat. That's not, that's not the desired effect we're looking for here. So this reduction in carbs puts our body into a metabolic state called ketosis. Your body then becomes very efficient at burning fat for energy. For example, I go out for a bike ride in the morning and I drink a cup of coffee. Let me rephrase that. I have organic whipping cream with coffee in it. I have two cups. So I probably use a good quarter cup. My coffee is very blonde. And then I go ride 50, 60 miles, never get hungry. Now I hydrate the whole time I'm riding, but I don't get hungry. Why? Because I gave fat as fuel and fat is a longer, slower burning fuel. So when you turn fat into ketones in the liver, that can sp also supply energy for the brain. So, you know, when we drop your carbohydrates down, you're not going to die. Your brain will get its needs from met from the liver. So a ketogenic diet then causes massive reductions in your blood sugar and insulin levels. So why would you need metformin then? 
So for me, no metformin. I mean, I have chosen to do this diet and I, I have to tell you that, I mean, I've been so satisfied with it. Marianne's been a slow converter on it, but she's seeing the difference now. I mean, our grocery bill is very, I mean, it's less compared to what we were because it's all fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, mostly, you know, proteins and, you know, you just don't get hungry. So there's a couple types of ketonic or ketogenic diets. Um, there's a standard one, and this is really hard to, to for people to, to do. And so, I mean, I will, I mean, that's why I do functional medicine. So if this is something you want to do, I will help you do it. So the standard ketogenic diet means 20 to 25, 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrate, net carbs per day. That's really hard to maintain. A targeted ketogenic diet um, is 25 to 50 grams of uh, net carbohydrates, 30 minutes or one hour before exercise. Uh, usually athletes um, or high activity people do that. I haven't felt like I've needed that. Um, cyclical. So every low carb keto, uh, eat low carb keto, keto for a couple days, and then a couple days eating a, a little bit higher carbs. I find just keeping it under 100 really works. I keep mine between 50 and 75, and on Sunday is my feed day, and I have not what I want. I still choose to make healthy selections, but I have a few more carbohydrates that day. But you can't go from being low carb to eating a box of donuts. It doesn't work that way your body's gonna be so confused and it'll shift right back into sugar burning. So you need to really kind of do this for a good two weeks. And that's why this 10 day is great because it's already kind of gearing you up to add another week on. So the standard ketogenic diet, it's a very low carb, moderate protein and high fat, 75% uh, fat, 20% protein and 5% carbs. But like I said, I mean, look at the tasty foods you can make. So you eat less protein so uh, 50 to 100 grams per women, 70 to 120 for men, depending on your exercise intensity. And like I said, I kind of do half your body weight, your desired body weight in grams of protein. Um, some of this can be geared more to athletes because I know most of you are pretty active. Um, but I would say, you know, doing your half your body weight in grams of protein of your desired body weight. If you weigh 180 and you want to be 150, you eat half of 150, which would be 75 grams. You want to eat more fat. So your avocados, egg yolks, your homemade mayo. Remember, mayo is egg, raw egg and oil blended together. I don't like it. Sorry. Homemade dressings, hollandaise, olives, organic heavy whipping cream, grass-fed butter, vegetables, meat. I mean, you know, if you're eating that, you're never going to get hungry. Uh, my, my typical um, break my fast meal is uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays is uh, uh, two hard-boiled eggs that are uh, free-range. A whole one whole avocado on a bed of spinach, and I may grate a little fresh Parmesan cheese on there. And I don't really, you could use olive oil on there too. I don't, I, I like it just like that. Or I can make it into an omelet and serve the avocado on the side. And that, that's full fat because I'm getting the fat from the egg yolks and I'm getting fat from the avocado. I get a little bit of protein from the whites, and then I get a few carbs from the spinach and a little bit of the protein and carbs from the cheese. I don't get hungry. I take a shake to work with me, which gives me more of my my plant-based protein, and then we finish vegetables for the, the evening. So when you're eating, starting your day with fat, it keeps you satiated almost the whole day. So that's why I want you to kind of switch that around. So cutting your carbs, um, you, you don't get into ketosis until you eat between 30 and 50 net carbs a day. I'm not saying you initially have to do that, but if you have really bad, you know, diabetes or severe insulin resistance, I mean, we, we can work with that, but that we, we want to structure that. that, that's where I come in. But if you can stay under that 100 grams of carbohydrates and, and watch that and then drop it down to maybe a day between 50 and 75 and keep it there, I think you'd be super happy. Because if you're eating enough fat, you're really not going to get hungry. And then uh, portion distortion, don't freak out because portions get too big. You'll be most likely um, exceed your, your natural protein requirements. But ketosis, there's a natural reduction in hunger. And that's kind of not that the 10 days putting you in keto ketosis. But it's starting. It's shutting down all your carbs you were to doing. So it's actually making the body work in a different way, which is my evil Halloween plan for you. So, you know, I like this a lot because I'm trying to move my. Hold on, I'm seeing if I can move this down. There we go. 
Um, you eat more intuitively. So try to sit down and pay attention to the flavor of the food, especially if you take 30, 40 minutes to make your food. You don't want to just scarf it down in five minutes. So taste it, enjoy it, feel that food in your mouth, know that somebody you know, raised that food on a farm, somebody had to haul that food someplace, and then your significant other or yourself just prepared that food. So take time to enjoy the flavor. Relax, sleep. Part of losing weight is about balancing hormones, including cortisol and leptin and ghrelin. Those are all hormones that your body naturally produces. Cortisol is what should happen and be released in your body in the morning to wake you up. If you're waking up at one or two o'clock in the morning and having a hard time going back to sleep, that's your cortisol effect. Give it time. It takes about two to three weeks for this high fat, low carb eating to get into that keto zone. Um, and there's plenty of information you can go to. There's uh, Keto Clarity. There's a book out. Um, Dietdoctor.com is the one I usually recommend. Dr. Berg has got some good information. And of course, there's always Dr. Google. And there's also Dr. Basut. You know, you can always ask me too. I, I like I said, I, I practice what I preach, and I know you know that. So this would, would be what your low carb grocery list would look like. You know, uh, if you're going to get a bacon, you know, you there's you know organic options you can do because you don't want a lot of sodium nitrate in it. So you want to be mindful of that. Um, and some of your like pepperoni and stuff like that. I, I'm not a big uh, food like that kind of. I don't overdo that. Maybe every once in a while we do that. We basically stick with chicken, fish eggs, um, a little bit of um, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, maybe once or twice a month. Um, we have some uh, wild-caught Alaskan crab legs. We've got some wild-caught scallops, something like that, you know, throughout the, you know, the, the week or the month. Your vegetables and fruit, your dairy, your nuts and seeds, uh, flowers, almond flour and coconut flour. Um, we normally have pizza on Sunday. We're doing the 21 day for my birthday, so we don't do any of that. We don't do any grains. So I make a pizza um, with quinoa with, uh, I use chia seed, sesame seed, flax seed. Um, I blend that up in, a, in the Nutri, Nutribullet that I'm trying to kill. It's starting to smell like it's, it's going to go. I, I know it's going to go soon so I can get a bigger one. But I use the milling blade and I, I kind of make a flour out of that. And I put it in a big steel bowl, throw an egg in it, throw some olive oil on it, some water. And then I use a pastry. Um, blender, a pastry cutter, and blend that, and then add water as needed, and then make a ball, and I roll it out, and on one of those Silpat mats, and bake it at 400 for about 15 minutes, kind of pinch the sides up and make it square, and then we put, um, like, a, we have an organic pizza sauce on it, and we put some, um, you know, fresh vegetables on it, garlic, lots of garlic, and then garlic, and then did we added garlic to that, too, and then some spinach and some uh, onions, and then we bake it, um, and, you know, on the purification, we don't put cheese on it. We can put some um, nutritional yeast, but you can actually cut it and pick it up like pizza. So um, that's really good. So we, you know, we, and I, and that's very satisfying because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not refined. And so you've got all the good nutrients from that and uh, it's very low carb. So when I have a patient doing ketosis, a so very strict ketosis, and even for me, I use beta food. Um, I use the organically male minerals. I use the veggie pro chocolate, and depending on the, the patient's needs, um, I use trace mineral B12 as well. Um, and I use I do use whey protein as I add that in with my veggie pro, so I make my own concoction. Um, those are all things I can help you with, but this kind of gives you an idea. We want to support the kidneys on the ketosis. If somebody's doing a lot of protein, their kidneys may um, ask questions. So we want to make sure we support that. Support that. So that's why we use the renatrophin. So that's when we kind of move to that next avenue. But I just want you to have this mindfulness in your in your uh, thought process now. So the other part of this whole thing is that this is one of the parts of um, I, what I call healthy aging. I'm not a big believer in anti-aging because we're, you know, I don't want to stay the same. I see people that try to stay the same and it's a little scary look, but I, I think we should, we can healthy age. We don't want to sit in a wheelchair drooling on ourselves when we're 90. Um, so I like to say I'm not old. I've just been young for a very long time. So that's really one of the other benefits of a ketogenic diet. Um, I also throw in some intermittent fasting because we eat way too much. So I take the same food I would eat instead of eating it three or four times a day, I eat it twice a day. And that that is also another factor there. That's for another conversation. But those are things that I use for me for uh, 
uh, healthy aging. So it keeps my sugar down. It gives me lots of energy. Um, you know, keeps me feeling great, keeps my skin good and keeps my weight well balanced. So those who think they have no time for healthy eating will sooner or later have time to find, have to find time for illness. So my goal for you and my gift always is to give you the information. It's because I care. I mean, I, if I didn't give you the information, it means I didn't care. And it's just, you know, you, you would see me more because you'd be hurting all the time. You'd be overweight. You wouldn't be feeling good. You have a lot of inflammation. So I'm trying to teach you to give you your life back. So on Thursday, we're going to do the finale. 6.30, we're going to do it on Zoom again. I will record this and send this to you in the morning. And I thank you for being here tonight.